The Mariana Trench is the deepest oceanic trench on Earth and home to the two lowest points on the planet. The crescent-shaped trench is in the western Pacific, just east of the Mariana Islands near Guam. The region surrounding the trench is noteworthy for many unique environments including vents bubbling up liquid sulfur and carbon dioxide, active mud volcanoes and marine life adapted to pressures 1,000 times that at sea level. The Challenger Deep, in the southern end of the Mariana Trench, is the deepest spot in the ocean. Its depth is difficult to measure from the surface, but in 2010, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration used sound pulses sent through the ocean and pegged the Challenger Deep D at 36,070 feet, 10,994 meters. A 2021 estimate using pressure sensors found the deepest spot in Challenger Deep was 35,876 feet, 10,935 m. Other modern estimates vary by less than 1,000 feet, 305 m. The ocean's second deepest place is also in the Mariana Trench. The Sirena Deep, which lies 124 miles, 200 kilometers, to the east of Challenger Deep, is a crushing 35,462 feet deep, 10,809 eam. By comparison, Mount Everest stands at 29,026 feet, 8,848 m above sea level, meaning the deepest part of the Mariana Trench is 7,044 feet, 2,147 m deeper than Everest is tall. The Mariana Trench is 1,580 miles, 2,542 kilometers long, more than five times the length of the Grand Canyon. However, the narrow trench averages only 43 miles, 69 kilometers wide. Because Guam is a United States territory and the 15 northern Mariana Islands are governed by a U.S. Commonwealth, the U.S. has jurisdiction over the Mariana Trench. In 2009, former President George W. Bush established the Mariana Trench Marine National Monument, which created a protected marine reserve for the approximately 195,000 square miles, 506,000 square km of seafloor and waters surrounding the remote islands. The monument includes most of the Mariana Trench, 21 underwater volcanoes and areas around three islands. What lives in the Mariana Trench? Recent scientific expeditions have discovered surprisingly diverse life in these harsh conditions. Animals living in the deepest parts of the Mariana Trench survive in complete darkness and extreme pressure, said Natasha Gallo, a doctoral student at the Scripps Institution of Oceanography who has studied video footage from filmmaker James Cameron's 2012 expedition into the trench. Food in the Mariana Trench is extremely limited because the deep gorge is far from land. Terrestrial plant material rarely finds its way into the bottom of the trench, Gallo told Live Science, and dead plankton sinking from the surface must drop thousands of feet to reach Challenger Deep. Instead, some microbes rely on chemicals, such as methane or sulfur, while other creatures gobble marine life that's below them on the food chain. The three most common organisms at the bottom of the Mariana Trench are xenophyophores, amphipods, and small sea cucumbers, holothurians, Gallo said. These are some of the deepest holothurians ever observed, and they were relatively abundant, Gallo said. The single-celled xenophyophores resemble giant amoebas, and they eat by surrounding and absorbing their food. Amphipods are shiny, shrimp-like scavengers commonly found in deep sea trenches. How they survive down there was a bit of a mystery because amphipod shells dissolve easily in the high pressures of the Mariana Trench. But in 2019, Japanese researchers found that at least one species of the Mariana Trench dwellers uses aluminum extracted from seawater to shore up its shell. During Cameron's 2012 expedition, scientists also spotted microbial mats in the Sirena Deep, the zone east of the Challenger Deep. These clumps of microbes feed on hydrogen and methane released by chemical reactions between seawater and rocks. One of the region's top predators is a deceptively vulnerable-looking fish. In 2017, scientists reported they had collected specimens of an unusual creature dubbed the Mariana snailfish, which lives at a depth of about 26,200 feet, 8,000 m. The snailfish's small, pink, and scaleless body hardly seems capable of surviving in such a punishing environment. 
But this fish is full of surprises, researchers reported in a study published that year in the journal Zootaxa. The animal appears to dominate in this ecosystem, going deeper than any other fish and exploiting the absence of competitors by gobbling up the plentiful invertebrate prey that inhabit the trench, the study authors wrote. Is the Mariana Trench polluted? Unfortunately, the deep ocean can act as a potential sink for discarded pollutants and litter. In a study published in 2017 in the journal Nature Ecology and Evolution, a research team led by scientists at Newcastle University in the United Kingdom showed that human-made chemicals that were banned in the 1970s are still lurking in the deepest parts of the ocean. While sampling amphipods, shrimp-like crustaceans, from the Mariana and Kermadec trenches, the researchers discovered extremely high levels of persistent organic pollutants, POPs, in the organism's fatty tissues. These included polychlorinated biphenyls, PCBs, and polybrominated diphenyl ethers, PBDEs, chemicals commonly used as electrical insulators and flame retardants, according to a study published in the journal Nature Ecology and Evolution. These puppies were released into the environment through industrial accidents and landfill leakages from the 1930s until the 1970s when they were finally banned. We still think of the deep ocean as being this remote and pristine realm, safe from human impact, but our research shows that sadly this could not be further from the truth. Lead study author Alan Jameson, a senior lecturer in marine ecology at Newcastle University, said in a statement, in fact, the amphipods in the study contained levels of contamination similar to that found in Suruga Bay, one of the most polluted industrial zones of the Northwest Pacific. Since POPs cannot degrade naturally, they persist in the environment for decades, reaching the bottom of the ocean by way of contaminated plastic debris and dead animals. The pollutants are then carried from creature to creature through the ocean's food chain, eventually resulting in chemical concentrations far higher than surface-level pollution. The fact that we found such extraordinary levels of these pollutants in one of the most remote and inaccessible habitats on Earth really brings home the long-term, devastating impact that humankind is having on the planet, Jameson said in the statement. Nor is the Mariana Trench immune from the plastic pollution that invades the world's oceans. A 2018 paper in the journal Geochemical Perspectives found that microplastics were alarmingly common in the lowest waters of the Mariana Trench, indicating that these plastics filter through the ocean to concentrate at its deepest points. What Scientists Found in the Mariana Trench Scientists exploring a marine trench near Japan were astonished to find a fish in one of the deepest parts of the ocean, at 8,336 meters, about 5 miles below the surface. The tadpole-shaped translucent creature is a type of snailfish, and it's probably the deepest fish anyone will ever find. They can't really go any deeper, says deep-sea scientist Alan Jameson of the University of West Australia, who led the team that made the discovery. The previous record holder, a juvenile snailfish seen in the Mariana Trench, was filmed at a depth of 8,178 meters in 2017. Fish withstand the high pressures of extreme depths because of compounds called osmolites in their cells. Osmolite concentrations increase at greater depths to ensure that fish cells don't shrink too much at such bone-crushing pressures. But these compounds reach their maximum concentration at around 8,400 meters. So that's the theoretical limit of fish physiology. If anyone does find fish deeper than this, it will not be by much, Jameson says. Ichthyologist Prasanta Chakrabarty, curator of fishes at Louisiana State University's Museum of Natural Science, is impressed that the fish, a species in the genus Pseudoliparis, could survive so far down, where the water pressure is 800 times that of the surface. At that depth, everything from gas exchange for breathing to nearly every physiological function seems impossible, he says. I can barely swim to the bottom of a swimming pool without my ears popping. Jameson's team discovered the snailfish in August 2022 at the bottom of the Izu Ogasawara Trench, near the main islands of Japan. The team was using crewed and uncrewed underwater vehicles to explore deep ocean trenches, and the Izu Ogasawara connects in the south to the deepest, the Mariana Trench. 
The deepest parts of the Japanese trench are slightly warmer than the Mariana, reaching about 1.7 degrees Celsius, 35 degrees Fahrenheit. Jameson says, The warmer water seems to be why the snailfish survive. Osmolites are less effective at low temperatures, and these snailfish are living near the edge of what's possible. The difference is a fraction of a degree, so we wouldn't care, Jameson says, but it makes a difference to marine animals. To photograph the fish, researchers on board the DSSV pressure drop sent down a lander, an autonomous underwater vehicle equipped with cameras, lights, and batteries, along with a weight to carry the contraption to the sea floor. The researchers used landers that carried dead fish as bait, deep-sea crustaceans ate the bait, and the snailfish came to eat the crustaceans. The lander that made the finding photographed a single juvenile snailfish at 8,336 meters. Though the team couldn't identify the type of snailfish, two others from the species Pseudoliparus beliaevi were caught in baited traps nearby, at a depth of 8,022 meters. More than 400 species of snailfish are known from shallow waters to extreme depths, and each species adapts to where it lives, Jameson says. Each trench has its own snailfish in it, he says. Once they've evolved to cope in a trench, they cannot decompress to get from one trench to another. In an email to Scientific American, ichthyologist Dahiana Arquila, curator of marine vertebrates at the University of California, San Diego's Scripps Institution of Oceanography, noted the part played by technology in the discovery. Rovers and landers will gain a deeper understanding of the unexplored regions of our planet's oceans, she wrote. Thanks for watching. To stay updated on the latest discoveries, make sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications.